In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about hexokinase and glucokinase. If we consider human genome, the human genome encodes four different types of hexokinases. These are hexokinase 1, hexokinase 2, hexokinase 3 and hexokinase 4. All these four different types of hexokinases, they catalyze the same reaction that is conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Now, if you had seen my previous video tutorial on glycolysis, then we know that this reaction is the first reaction of the glycolysis. Now, all these four isoenzymes, they catalyze this same reaction. But hexokinase 4 has very important regulatory and kinetic difference with respect to rest 3 of the isoenzyme. So, because of that, hexokinase 4 has been given one separate name that is glucokinase. So, remember glucokinase is nothing but the hexokinase 4, whereas hexokinase 1, 2 and 3, they are collectively referred as a simple hexokinase. So, whenever hexokinase is written without any number, we have to understand that we are talking about this hexokinase 1, 2 and 3, whereas glucokinase, it refers to only this hexokinase 4. Now, let us look at the differences, important regulatory as well as enzyme kinetic differences between glucokinase and hexokinase. So, first hexokinase and glucokinase. The first difference between hexokinase and glucokinase is that hexokinase is present in all the tissues. Whereas glucokinase, it is not found in all the tissues, uh, rather it is found only in the limited tissue. What are these tissue? It is found in liver and beta cells of pancreas, right. The second important difference is that hexokinase, it has a broad specificity. Its specificity is broad. Now, what is the meaning of broad specificity? It means that particular enzyme will be able to work on more than one type of substrate. So, here hexokinase has a broad specificity. That means it is able to work on more than one type of substrate. So, as the name is suggesting, it is working on all the hexosugar and especially all these hexosugar, main hexosugars are glucose, fructose and mannose. Whereas glucokinase, it is a narrow specificity. That means it is able to work only on one or two different substrate. But in case of glucokinase, it is only one substrate that is glucose. The third difference is that that hexokinase has a very high affinity, very high affinity for the glucose. And if we talk in the terms of enzyme kinetics, this high affinity means low chem value, right? Whereas glucokinase, it is a low affinity. And in enzyme kinetic term, it translates to it has very high chem value, right. The third important difference is that this hexokinase, they have a very slow rate of reaction. These are sluggish enzymes or you can say these are slower enzymes. And in kinetic terms, we say that it has a low Vmax, that is its maximum velocity is low. Whereas glucokinase, they are very rapidly acting enzymes. So, in enzyme kinetic uh, terminology, we can say that it has very high Vmax value, right? Vmax is the maximum velocity of the enzyme. So, these three kinetic differences we had discussed, right? Now, let us look at the regulatory differences between hexokinase and glucokinase. See, both of these enzyme, they catalyze the same reaction that is glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. In case of this hexokinase, what happens? This hexokinase catalyzes this reaction, right? So, in case of hexokinase, what happens? This glucose 6-phosphate is able to inhibit this hexokinase, whereas it is not able to inhibit this glucokinase. There is no inhibition of the glucokinase by this glucose 6-phosphate. So, we can write that there is a feedback inhibition or it hexokinase is inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate, whereas in this case, in this glucokinase, it is not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate, right? 
The second important aspect is that the glucose is able to actually induce this glucokinase. Glucose, it can stimulate glucokinase, whereas glucose is not able to stimulate hexokinase. So, we can say that hexokinase is, is not inducible by glucose. It is not inducible, whereas glucokinase, it is inducible by this glucose. So, this is inducible enzyme. Right. So, these two important regulatory differences we have to remember. Now, because of these differences between hexokinase and glucokinase, their entire role in the glucose metabolism is different in spite of catalyzing the same reaction. So, the question arises that what role is served by hexokinase and what role is served by the glucokinase in glucose metabolism. Right. So, let us first discuss about this role. See, hexokinase, its main role is to facilitate generation of ATP from the glucose. Its main role is to facilitate generation of ATP from glucose. Whereas, the main role of glucokinase is not to generate ATP, rather to regulate the influx of glucose following meal. So, to regulate the influx of glucose follow, following meal. Now, how these differences between hexokinase and glucokinase translates to their different role in the metabolism of glucose, right? That we need to understand. See, let us first discuss about hexokinase. Hexokinase. In case of hexokinase, we had just discussed that it has high affinity, right? High affinity for glucose. Now, what does it mean? It means it can bind with the glucose even when glucose concentration is low, right? Even at the low glucose concentration, hexokinase will able to bind with the glucose and then able to work, right? So, this, this particular characteristic of hexokinase, it ensures that ATPs are produced even at the low glucose concentration, right? The second characteristic of hexokinase is that it is very slow or sluggish enzyme. What does it mean? It means that although glucose is able to bind with the hexokinase, it is not able to convert it to glucose 6-phosphate at, at a very high speed. There will be only a small amount of glucose 6-phosphate will be generated. So, this ensures that only required amount of glucose is utilized by the cell, right? And the third important characteristic of this hexokinase is it is inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. So, what will happen if more glucose 6-phosphate is there, then hexokinase will stop working. So, it will not produce any unnecessary glucose 6-phosphate. So, all these three roles, they are like very, uh, they, they fit for the purpose to facilitate generation of ATP from the glucose. Now, let us look at the glucokinase. In case of glucokinase, it is a low affinity for the glucose, right? So, what will happen because of this low affinity of the glucose? This low affinity, it ensures that glucose is utilized only when glucose concentration is high. It will not act at a low glucose concentration. It will act only when glucose concentration is high. And we know that glucose when glucose concentration will be higher, it will be higher after meal, right? Or after taking food, there will be a lots of influx of glucose. At that time, this higher blood glucose concentration will lead to higher activation of glucokinase. The second important aspect is that glucokinase acts rapidly. This is the rapid enzyme. It has a higher Vmax. And this rapidity, it ensures that more of the glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate, right, in a very short time. So, what will happen? That after meal, you had taken food. So, now your portal blood is full of glucose. So, that full of glucose, this higher amount of glucose will be utilized by the glucokinase and it is rapidly converted to glucose 6-phosphate. And once it is converted to glucose 6-phosphate, it remains trapped inside the cell. So, it can bring down this increase glucose load, right? The third important characteristic is that it is inducible by glucose. It, it gets stimulated 
by the glucose. This also ensures that whenever higher glucose concentration is there, more and more glucokinase will be activated, which will bind with more and more glucose and it, their speed will also increases. Right? So, what will happen because of this? Because of this, after meal, when there is a higher load of glucose, at that time glucose is utilized more and more of the glucose 6-phosphate is generated, which helps in the trapping of this glucose inside the cell. And because of that, what will happen? The increased load of the glucose in the blood, it can be brought down. Now, glucokinase is also strategically located. See, it is located where? It is located in the liver and beta cells of pancreas, right? So, what will happen in the liver? See, you had taken a meal, right? After taking meal, there is a flood of glucose or there is increased blood glucose in the portal vein. So, what will happen? From the portal vein, this flood of glucose, it will reach to the liver and inside the liver, glucose will be converted to glucose 6-phosphate. Now, once it is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and as discussed in the previous tutorial, this glucose 6-phosphate, it cannot transport it through the cell membrane. So, this glucose 6-phosphate, it remains trapped inside the cell, right? So, what this will help? It will help us to bring down blood glucose. That is the first thing. Second thing, what will happen to this increased glucose 6-phosphate? It will be diverted for the glycogen synthesis. So, what will happen? This extra glucose will be stored as a glycogen and this glycogen will be utilized whenever there is a starvation, right? So, two important purposes are served in the liver. The second, why it is located in the beta cell? What is the purpose over there? See, here also after meal, there is an increased load of glucose, right? So, more glucose and this glucokinase will convert more and more glucose into the glucose 6-phosphate. This glucose 6-phosphate can undergo glycolysis and meanwhile, it generates ATPs. The, these ATPs, they are very strong stimulus for the secretion of insulin, right? And we all know that insulin, it has many metabolic influencing action by which it can bring down blood glucose concentration, right? So, we can say that the primary function of glucokinase is to regulate the influx of glucose following the meal or postprandial period and thereby preventing glucose overload. Whereas the primary function of hexokinase is to facilitate generation of ATP. As you can see that hexokinase is present in all the tissue and all tissues, they require ATP, right? So, this was all about the hexokinase and glucokinase. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.